Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us, for participating with us in the reading of the Word of the Lord. I pray that the Lord would just speak to us today, even as we go through His Word together, that He would open up His Word to us, that He would help us to see the truth within His Word, and that He would give us grace, even as we would read through His Word today. Today we're busy in the first epistle to the Corinthians, and we're going to be closing out the book today, and we're going to be going through chapters 15 and 16. And Today we begin with what is one of the most pivotal passages of Scripture. This is chapter 15 of the first epistle to the Corinthians. This is Paul's exposition of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and what his resurrection means to us as the church, or rather the body of believers. Paul, but not Paul, but rather the Lord Jesus Christ himself through Paul, shows us that the gospel is made alive through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, surely the crucifixion of our Lord was him taking upon himself our sin and strife. Yet, without the resurrection, there is no hope of life for us after death. And this is important for us to understand. The empty tomb is more important to us than even the cross, because the cross, even though this is where the Lord took upon himself all of our burdens and all of our sin, all of our iniquity, this is where we were, where we received the blood to wash us clean. It would not have been made whole unless the resurrection happened. And this is what Paul is talking about here. He is saying, if Christ is now risen from the dead, he has become the first fruits of them which slept. Now, this word first fruits is so important for us to understand because this is referring back to the feast of the first fruits and the waving of the sheaves. And this is where that was the celebration of what the Lord was giving to the people, how the Lord would minister to the people in the benefit of these crops and of these wonderful harvests that they would receive. And they offered these first fruits up to the Lord. Now, Jesus Christ is the first fruits of them which slept. What is that talking about? That means that Jesus Christ is the first one to have raised up from the dead incorruptible. Now we know that when Jesus was alive, he raised people up from the dead, like Lazarus. He raised up the little girl, uh, Jairus' daughter. But they were raised up only to die again. Jesus Christ raised up incorruptible. And those that raised up after his resurrection raised up incorruptible after him. So he is that first fruits of them which slept. And then Paul talks about the correlation between Adam and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he even calls Jesus Christ the last Adam here. And he says, in Adam we all die. Yes, because Adam fell at the beginning. In Adam we all receive death. And the Lord said, in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. And this was the curse upon mankind, that in that day all of us that have partaken in this sin through Adam we all die. Now so in Jesus Christ, we can be made alive. And the Lord Jesus Christ comes to heal, to rule, to reign, and to make us alive in Him, and to give us that resurrection which we long for. Paul even goes as far as to say that if the resurrection had not happened, then we above all men are most miserable. And so it is important to understand the resurrection. Paul breaks it down in quite a bit of detail, so I don't have to go through it so much in the overview here. Obviously, this is not a study, but it is important that you understand what the, the relevance and the importance of the resurrection is because it is critically important to our faith. It is the only faith where we have a definite resurrection that has happened and a resurrection which we can look forward to in our Lord Jesus Christ because he has raised up from the dead. There is no other religion that speaks about the resurrection from the dead in the way that we believe it as Christians. And we have an example of how it has happened. And that is the beauty of it. And Paul talks about us raising up now incorruptible. And this is something that we also need to remember. He gives us the example to talk about something has to die for it to be made alive again. And we think about the parable of the Lord Jesus Christ where he said, uh, if a grain of wheat fall into the ground, it must die. Then it bringeth forth much fruit. And so too with us. If we die to ourselves, we are raised up 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are raised up incorruptible in him. And as incorruptible, we can then inherit the kingdom of God because corruption cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Only incorruption can inherit the kingdom of God. And he speaks about the catching away. And on that day, those who have not fallen asleep as yet, they will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. They shall be changed. But those that had passed on already, they will be raised up and they will be changed incorruptible. And then they will be caught up together with him in the air. And then he says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which give us us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is so wonderful. And this is how beautiful this passage is. Please go through it with much meditation. And then we get to chapter 16, which is Paul's closing statements to the church to look after the brethren, to care for one another, to greet the people well. And he brings greetings as well with him from other apostles. And there he gives them a final benediction where he says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all your things be done with charity. And this is where we're going to leave it also for today. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, 
if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Chapter 16 Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. 
but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints that ye submit yourselves unto such and to every one that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. The end of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians.